<laughs> oh my god, look at like me just got fresh out the gym. Ah, uh, no, that's just my everyday look these days. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's uh, it's Wednesday, baby. It's 10 a.m. You already know what time it is. It's the Devo and Chris Joe show. We appreciate y'all tuning in, man. Joe, it seems like uh, we got a lot to talk about today, man. We, you know, it's a lot going on, a lot on the court, a lot off the court. Um, so I, I, I guess, uh, you know, let's start with the the game, the Wake Forest game. Obviously, 99-70 or, or whatever it was. Um, yeah, 30. I mean, a, a good well, a good old uh, old fashioned ass whooping. You know what I mean? So it's he, they shot twelve and nineteen from three. Wake Forest sixty six percent from the field. Uh, it, you know, defense was uh, a non factor uh, for Syracuse yeah. that game. So, uh, I mean, I guess start right there, man. Like, you know, how's the locker room? What's you know, we, we heard what Red was talking about. He was he was pretty straightforward about um, you know what the team has to do, but. You know, if, if, if those you or you're sitting in that locker room, you know, what are those guys thinking? What do they got to do, man, going forward? Look, they first of all, they got to dig deep. They got to look at themselves in the mirror, man, and, and, and just figure out what they can all do individually to help this team get over the hump. You know what I mean? It's, it's two games in a row where teams are shooting well over 50 percent uh, from three. It seems as though even if we're contesting, it's just not enough. You know what I mean? It's like. We got to go that extra mile. We got to be more selfless out there, whatever it may be. And, of course, my biggest thing, too, is, again, the rebounding between the two forwards last game uh, wasn't very many, you know, and that's me being nice. You know what I mean, believe it was zero. Um, let me see. I'm checking right now. You talk, well, let's see, Justin, it, it was, uh, <laughs> yeah. It was zero between, <laughs> between you know, uh, Justin yeah. Taylor and Chris Bell. And we, we've been talking about them, Joe. Uh, I mean, you yeah, know, no, Justin, sure. he had 10 points, but, it, I mean, in a game like this, I, I guess it really didn't mean much. But zero really matter. Matter. Null and void. Bro. Null and void in this case, man. We got to be able to get stops, keep guys in front of us. We're having a real hard time just – keeping guys in front of us and stopping them from getting in and getting paint touches, which is what hurts teams in general, right? Causing extra rotations, extra help, um, and leading to open shots, you know, 66% from three last team shot 50 something percent, or if not 50 on the nose, we got to look at each other, you know, look to your left, look to your right and say, fellas, we got to pick this shit up. Like it's either now or never, you know what I'm saying? There's probably what it is, five, five six games left, whatever it may be left in the conference um, leading up to, to the tournament, conference tournament. And not to say that the season can't be salvaged, but it has to happen now. And with that being fucking said, it's something else that could hurt the locker room or hurt the morale of the team at this point, you know, given the news that came out uh, yesterday. Um, but before we even get into that, what the team needs to do, the guys who will be active and the guys who will be present for the rest of the season, we got to look at each other and just figure it out. You know what I'm saying? There's only but so much a coach could draw up, so much a coach could say, so much a staff can say. It's all about players, man. And, and those five guys at any particular time on the court, the supporting uh, guys that are on the bench, you know, waiting for their opportunity. It's a collective. Uh, it's a collective thing, right there. It's, it's got to be done by committee. If if we're not able to commit to that, you know, what I'm saying that grind for the next month and change, they might as well pack it up. And like you said, defense was a, a non-factor, bro. Forty points in the paint. You talked about you know paint touches. Wake Forest had forty points, and, and they also had twenty-two fast break points. So I guess they were kind of doing a little bit of both in the half court and getting out and. In transition, 12 points off turnovers. They had uh, 17 bench points and nine second chance points. So, but like you said, 66% from the field, 60, almost 64% from three for the game. They got to the free throw line 24 times. Um, so, you know, they had 16 assists. So it's, yeah, bro. I mean, that, that was a good, good ass whooping right there. Like you said, the locker room got to come together. They got to figure out what they really want to do. Regardless, you know, they can't even think about NCAA tournament birth. They got to think about this this next nah. game right here tonight it. Uh, against Louisville, like one by one. You know what I'm saying? Like have some pride when you go out there and, and step out on the court. You know what I'm saying? You're like home now too, man. Fucking protect the dome, man. 
And and I understand too, bro, going out there losing games. But when you losing like that, that telling me you're not competing. You know what I'm saying? That that tell me you, you you quitting on your team, your teammates, your coaches. Like that's there there's no way a team should score a hundred points if you're giving effort, energy, and and, and yeah. we talk about the threes every time, right? Threes. Effort, energy, yes, sir. effort, energy, enthusiasm. Like those if you could bring those to the table, then I think everything else usually falls into place. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, speaking speaking of what happened, um, you know, recently, uh, as of just yesterday, right? Uh, uh, Benny yeah. Williams uh, was dismissed from the team. You know, we've heard. I mean, since the beginning of the year, obviously, with him being suspended and then him going through what he was going through, uh, I, I guess it, it, he was already on the verge, bro, of, of being out. It just took one more thing, and um, it, you know, yeah, I, I, I don't really, I, I don't want to speculate too much but um uh, you know you know probably something in practice or you know who knows what it is just you know not showing up i don't know but it, it would obviously was the last straw for red and and i think for red you have to be able to set that tone and set that standard right now boom like hey we're not taking any shit no bullshit for real like if you if you mm-hmm. coming in and, and, and you're not working you being lazy in practice you missing workouts you you, you uh yeah. you know talking back doing all that we can't have you apart regardless of how talented you are i'll tell you what it's another motherfucker out there who's ready for that shit to come in and, no and take that take those minutes and get that opportunity there's somebody ready You're for that grateful and, and i tell you this and and it's hard right now bro because even when, back then i man out of first to tell you I, i'm a guy who got into it with coach behind the verbal exchange all that you know what i'm saying we but it was coming from a different place it wasn't wasn't disrespect it was a competitive spirit you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like we, we we loved to win. We were competing. It was always about the basketball. It wasn't no missing practice. Or it, it wasn't none of that shit. And I tell you what, man. Back then, may I might not have like understood it, but like as far as like like we talk about being grateful just for having this opportunity. How many people would kill or die for this opportunity to be at the Syrac- Syracuse University and put on this jersey? Exactly. And, and then for him right now, Benny, it's not, that's not in his mindset right now thinking that that's not like you, you get a free college education, like the experience of a lifetime to be able to play in front of a crowd like this. Uh, I, I mean, you could tell somebody right now till you're blue in the face, Joe, you know what I'm saying? But it's up to them to make that choice and make that decision and, and really believe it. Like, man, yeah, you're right. Like, let me yeah. fall, fall back a little bit and, and do what I'm supposed to do, man. You know, it's it, it, what you signed up for. And shit might and not it, always end up how you want it to be, bro. You might not. You might have came in here with expectations of starting, which is good. You expect to start at some point. Whatever your expectations were, it didn't pan out that way. You know what I'm saying? But it's not like you can't make the most of the opportunity that's given. Mind you, he started to play more. He started to play better. He was looking more like a bright spot than a dark cloud out there for the team. Yeah. Um, but you know, you are who you are, I guess. And when shit goes bad and you revert back to old ways because you just don't know any better, he's a young, he's still, you know, all the guys are young. He's a young man trying to figure it out. And I don't believe in 100% certainties because even condoms say 99.9, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> I would say, <laughs> I would say that 99.9% sure in a few years, he's going to regret not doing everything possible to you know, make the most of this opportunity. You know what I mean? That's what it's going to come down to. It's just when you get to that age and you're of maturation and you're like, shit, man, like, I should have, I fucked up. And you got to be able to hold yourself accountable, be able to look at yourself and say that. Because for, for, for probably now, it's a lot of, and I don't know for sure, but I just know being what it is to be young. And I know being young is a lot of blaming others and not looking at yourself. And I, and I still, to this point, don't even know what happened in that situation. But for a guy of that talent and potential and all that to just say, and a, and a key piece, you know, a key guy off the bench for us that could at any given night give us 15 and 8 or whatever the case may be, you know, for him to be dismissed and just like that before the end of the season, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, it was something that, you know, probably been brewing. And, you know, the final straw or the straw that brought the camels back, you know, it's just it was time. And you know what? At the end of the day, you never know what kind of energy he was bringing to the team aspect and how he was maybe dragging them down with him. You know what I mean? So at that point, it's almost like you got to make a decision, like you mentioned, as a coach, um, 
shit, am I going to let this one individual make it bad for everybody? Like he doesn't, he's not bigger than the, the team. You feel me? Especially a younger so you team, right? Decision. Oh yeah, no question. So no one, no one man is above the team. And I guess this was a prime example of that. And, and maybe this is something that he needs for himself. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to get a wake up call or to be, you know, because I don't know the situation, Joe, as far as do you get to stay in school? Because if you're off the basketball team, that's your scholarship. So I don't know how you're going to be right. in school if they take away your scholarship. So it's it, mm-hmm. it, it's a it's more than basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like you lose the opportunity to get that, you know, Syracuse degree because uh, obviously, you know, you got this year and next year. But yeah, yeah man, I don't know. This this could be his wake up call. He goes sit, go back home, whatever he does. And he's sitting there and he's like, you know, a week goes by, two weeks go by. You're going to start to think about that shit going to be heavy on your mind. You know what I mean? And it's like, it, I was one of those kids, like, I, you know, obviously I left early, but I, I just know looking back, like, how great a time I had in college besides the hoop. Besides the hoop part. The hoop part was, like, automatic. We already know, but, like, me and you, me, you know, getting those relationships, lifelong relationships, you know, with your teammates, with your coaches and, uh, you know, just being a part of the community. And it's hard for, I think, people to at that age, Joe, to embrace that. But I think we did a pretty good job of embracing that, being no in the questions. community and, and, and being and being a part of it. I think uh, that's my advice to kids, to guys when they come here, like be a part of the community and embrace it because they love you and, uh, they're going to show you love. Don't just, you know, be up on the campus. And especially at times, maybe Joe, when you feel like you're having a bad game or uh, you, you, you in a little funk. I know a lot of times I was able to go off campus and kind of just, just kick it and just be on some, you know, real life shit. Not even talking about, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not even talking about the hoop shit, just, just, just kicking yeah. it and kind of getting your yeah. mind off shit. So, but man, I, and and Matt uh, Gavendo, shout out Matt. He he uh, asked a good question. What are some of the positives and negatives in regards to losing Benny? Um, Joe, I'll let you go first, and then I'll, I'll kind of talk about it. But um, what are some of the positives and negatives? I'd say a, a, a negative is obviously just what he's able to bring to the basketball court. Like I said, a Benny with his, uh, 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 with his mind sharp and engaged in what he's supposed to be doing is a guy that could come in off the bench and really be a contributor for us and help us win some basketball games. He's 6'9", athletic, um, you know, over the course of some year, you know, he was hit, hitting the three a bit this year, but still would have liked to see him get to the basket more, get fouled, get to the free throw line. But we've seen him um, in transition, getting catching hoops and things like that, looking excited to be a part of the program and looking happy to be playing basketball. So a Benny like that is obviously it's a negative because, you know, he could contribute for us. Um, the positive, like I said, is if the attitude was an issue, he's been suspended. There's been rumblings about him and, uh, you know, just getting into it. You know, he was on the bench that one time stretching and yawning. and those type of antics, um, are not the types that we need to be. I guess the latest was you know, the shoulder helping. bump. I don't know. I the guess they said, bump. Yeah, I see. I don't know. Yeah, they started yeah. a little shoulder bump. It could be something, it yeah. could be nothing. You know what I mean? But all those, those negative, uh, antics that he was bringing turns out to be a positive because those young guys don't need that around them. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's easy, especially when things are going bad we don't lost two in a row or three out of our last, whatever it was. And now Benny's acting like this, Benny for sure being an older guy and guys, guys probably look up to him, you know, to a certain degree. And his, his talk probably is not positive. He doesn't right. strike me as someone that's going to come in there and be like, nah, guys, let's, you know, we could do it. Let's just, Man, fuck this, man. This shit is ooh, ooh, ooh. Everything's going bad. He's definitely, you know, seeming like a glass half empty kind of guy. So to have that outside of the locker room, we don't want to make sure we don't want to. We want to make sure we get rid of that rotten fruit and be able to build with the guys who want to be there. And what that does is it gives someone, you know, an, an opportunity, someone to come in there and, and step in that's going to be ready to uh, contribute to the team and. I'm sure there's guys who've been waiting for an opportunity for a bigger role off the bench or a bigger role just in general. Um, and this will bring that forth. Yeah, a hundred percent agree with both of what you said. I, I, obviously we, we talked about several times, Joe, on, on, on several different shows that we had about him being the X factor and when he's engaged and 
locked in. He's an impact out on the floor. Probably one of the most athletic dudes on the floor for both teams at any time. You know what I mean? If, he, if he's really sprinting the floor, he could get easy buckets, alley-oop dunks. You know, he's a guy who could rebound on both sides of the floor. Uh, I mean, just him bringing his energy and effort is is going to make an impact. And I think sometimes, you know, for him, you know, defensively, he got lost as far as on the rotations and, um, you know, just kind of mental errors. But And then I think just being able to, like, really – buy into his role and we talked about that on all the time we talk about that it's just being able to buy into your role from what you came from to here can you change that up and buy into this role here you, you might have been the man at your school before but now you hear this is what we need you to do to be an x-factor and, and to really like m- make yourself some money for real yeah. if you buy into this role you know what i'm saying like fly around defensively rebound dunk the ball get putbacks play defense you know what I mean? Just show that you give an effort and energy. You're going to put yourself in a position to show people that you want to make some money playing over oh, or, or whatever it is, man. And, and, and that's, that's the sad part of it because we've, we've seen glimpses of it to where he, ha- he could do that. You know what I mean? And then, and then you're right. I think a hundred percent, the positive is we don't know. We're not in that locker room like that, but if that is that attitude does rub off to those younger guys I mean, how do we know if they're mentally strong enough to be able to handle that? You know what I'm saying? To be able to handle him. Right away, a, a young boy going to be like, man, he fucking right. Coach on some bullshit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Coach, and, and now that goes to the next year. Because these guys are around each other. So they're talking about it like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, just takes, it takes one guy to be able to bring that bad energy, that negative energy. And, and now it takes takes a hold of the whole team, man. And, and especially, like we said, with, with, with a young team. So I just think... Coach you know Rand's crazy, bro. Go ahead. I can't remember one time where that was ever the talk in my four years at school was like we're out the gym and like we bring that like once we're out the gym, whether it be the dome or practice, bro, we didn't talk about Bayheim. We didn't talk about anything like and maybe it's because things were going well. Like we were always pretty good throughout my four years, but there was never any negative, negative uh thoughts there was never it was love from player to player from player to staff and vice versa um so i just don't know how it gets to that point you know what i'm saying like it gets to that point when a kid feels like he's being singled out it gets to that point when a kid feels like he's you know always the target something goes wrong it's his fault or he's always you know playing the victim and i think that's when it when it becomes an issue for the individual and that's when that attitude changed or, you know, everything is my fault or everybody's always on me and I'm just trying to do it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, bro, it, it's just, it was just glaring. I'm just thinking like, damn, I, I never once remember us being together at Goldstein or at Shine or wherever the fuck we could have been at. And we're talking about coach on some bullshit. Nah, it was always, let's, how are we going to figure out a way to win the next game? I'm talking about, we strategizing off the court we were to get we might be playing the game and think about that we got louisville so how how are we going to beat them or you know they do this in the zone or how who could we exploit on defense all these talks that we were having outside of the you know what i'm saying so i'm not sure what it is if it's a generational thing i'm not sure again i don't want to you know speculate but it's just crazy for me to think about how it was for us um when we were playing as opposed to the things that i that i've been seeing over the course of some years yeah, I, I think just harder to get everybody on the same page. And, and I mean, bro, it seemed like obviously with, with the, I mean, and I think the NIL is a good thing. Don't get me wrong. I, I just think sometimes it depends on who you're giving it to, right? And, and how they're going to handle it. Like, you know, now you give him, you give him some money. Now he's feeling all, some type of way. Like, how are you going to talk to me like that? I do. It, it's just, that's just how I, I feel some some kids are when, once they get that bag a little bit, you know, to, mm-hmm. talking back to the coach or not listening to the coach showing up late, just not showing respect. It, and, and I'm yeah, not, I don't want to sound like a, I don't want to sound like a old head or old, old school guy. But I, as far as that goes, I think that's old school part that needs to be in there. Like, man, like you, you in there are 45 minutes before practice, you lock it in, you getting your work in. Like when the coach texts you, you text him back. When you got something to go to, you go. You know what I'm saying? Like and you take care it's of your best, especially your duty. Duty. It's your duty, bro. It's your duty. And if they give you, you ten racks, bro, we you was doing that for free to go sign fifteen hundred autographs. You know what I'm saying? And then it, for free, these bro. dudes get ten racks, twenty racks. Man, I'm be there. I'm gonna be there two, three hours early. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and like we said, that what you want out of this college experience is what we go to Syracuse to get to the league more times than not. You know what I'm saying? Even the like everybody on scholarship is thinking, I want to go pro at the very least. What do you think it takes to get to that level? You think it's going to be showing up on time? You think it's going to be not getting extra work in? You think it's going to be not being coachable? Nah, bro. This shit is a, a, a fraternity. You know what I'm saying? Like, now what happens to a young boy who gets dismissed? What do you think that image shows to the rest of the however many coaches is at the D1 level? Mid-season. Some might not give a fuck because they need the talent. You know what I'm saying? Them lower-tier conferences. But right. <laughs> where are you going to go? Where are you going to go and, like, play high-level basketball when this is what's going on at one of the most prestigious basketball programs in America? Where are you going to go? Oh, yo, Red, what happened? do do now, Come on, like he's we said, keeping it real. He's keeping it real. He has to. He has to because if that, he, if he doesn't, and this team takes a him. chance on this kid, and he fucks up over there, nah, now you're breaking relationships because you never know what happens down the line, bro. You never know what's gonna happen down the line. You feel me? So, it's it's, it's a tough situation all around, man. Um, you know, it's gonna. It, it, we'll see. I guess we'll see. You know, tonight how that how that either how that affects us, whether it's in a good way, bad way. But I do believe that Red and staff are going to make sure these guys are ready to play. You know, we done the drop two in a row. Louisville, I don't want to say it's a layup because they've been, you know, playing some a better brand of basketball. But I never thought I'd see the day this season where I'd be worried, let's just say, you know, about going into a game against Louisville. Exactly. And, and, and I've seen, I, I guess the, some of the players had some reactions on online. And that's, that's what I'm saying. You know it's going to get blown out of proportion social media, everything about Benny Williams being dismissed, like, you know, broken heart emojis and, you know, whatever. But I mean, God, yo, if I, I think as a good teammate, if you've seen this coming, if and I'm not saying that guys didn't approach him and say something, but if you've seen this coming and you know it could affect the team in the long run, you got to nip it in the bud right there, right there and there. I, I mean, those guys who say stuff, I'm ho- I'm hoping they stepped up and were able to say nothing. Younger, older, it doesn't matter. Like, you should have went in and, and said, something. yo, man, let's go, man. We got to lock in. And, and I, maybe guys did, maybe guys did. But I hope that yeah. is the case. Like, where if, if he going to go out, at least go out letting them know, like, bro, you fucking up. You're not only fucking up, up us, you fucking up yourself. And mm-hmm. what you got going on? And what you could have, because, bro, like you said, who is going to want to take him now, bro? Given even, this scenario, how this ended, tough, even tough. Even next year. Even yep. next year, bro. Who is going to want to take you? Because you're not transferring because you're not playing. You're, you're, you're not. You got kicked off the team. Yeah, exactly. Like, dudes, <laughs> don't, like you said, unless – a lower tier, okay, I bet they, they'll probably, hey, you're going to be okay? Like, yeah, got, coaches will take guys. You know what I'm saying? That's not an issue. But if McNasty you get, State. What's that school? McNasty? McNeesey? Whatever oh, the fuck McNeesey. his name is. Who said that? <laughs> oh, McNeesey. No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> he could yeah. go to the SWAC. He could go to the SWAC. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The SWAC got The SWAC State. got you getting forty five dollars for per diem. You know what I'm saying? Forty five dollars for the week. For the week Bethune, or something like Cookman, that. Cookman. <laughs> man, you taking the bus everywhere, man. Nah, that, that shit, shit. Man, it's, it's tough, man. It's a tough situation. Um, I but ultimately, in the end, what I do want to say is this: I said what I said, and I stand by it. But what I do. Ultimately, I do wish him the best of luck in whatever. It, I, I hope that, like you said, that this turns uh, something, something on, you know, where Don't he click. a wake up call. A wake up call. I'm hoping that could be it. And, you know, a look in the mirror and say, maybe I, I'm the one that needs to change as opposed to, you know, thinking everybody should change for me or should be at my beck and call. Like, you know, so hopefully that's the approach that he does take. And, um, you know, he la- and I hope that he lands on his feet because it would be a shame for a kid of that talent and potential to just let it go to waste, so to speak. So, again, I'm hoping he, he, it didn't work out at the Qs. You know, I, I he was my X factor for two years, damn near. You know what I mean? Like, I, I did have hope for him and, and, you know, that, I mean, he showed glimpses of it, like you mentioned, but 
I'm hoping that he could go somewhere where he ultimately, bro, at the end of the day, where he's happy and it works out for everybody. If the case was that he just was unhappy and that's that's what that's what um, caused his, I guess, mannerisms and his 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 approach to things, where he was being laid or not showing up or yawning on the bench. If he was just an unhappy guy in Syracuse, playing under Bayheim and and Red then I hope that he's able to go somewhere where he could just be happy and, and play hoop. And if that's going to be at a layer, lower tier spot, then so be it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, on a more positive note. Yeah, Joe, a hundred percent. You, you, you wish the kid the best, you know what I'm saying? Everyone makes mistakes. I was one of those kids who made mistakes all the time at school. You know what I mean? And, and it took me a while to, to be able to learn from those and really figure out, you know, a, a solution to those or, or, or if, if I get in a situation like that, how to handle it differently, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, hopefully this is, his, this is his wake up call to where it might take a little bit to where he, he figures it out and goes about it the right way going forward, man. We don't wish no ill will towards nobody on this show. Nobody. You know what I'm we, no, we, no, want no. we keep it real as possible, but we, at the end of the day, it's all love. Um, real quick. I was in Toronto this past weekend recruiting, in Brampton, Ontario. Um, and who do I see walking to the gym? Another Q alone, our good brother, JP, Jake Pursuti. You know what I'm saying? Oh. He was out there. Yep, yep. So that was a good little encounter. I was shocked to Buffalo. see him. He's at Buffalo. So he was right across the right across the way. It probably took him two and a half hours to get to Toronto. Um, and we chopped it up for a good little bit just to talk, to talk about, uh, you know, coaching and how it's going on his side and just the dynamic of the NIL. So we were able to speak for, um, you know, a little bit, probably like a good 15 or 20 minutes before I had to go run and get me some jerk chicken. You know what I'm saying? I was getting hungry, so I had to get out of there. But shout out JP. Um, I hope he's doing, you know, I know he's doing well, but I hope he continues to, to do well, recruit well, and keep growing in this game. You know, you know we got to give a shout out to the, yeah, you know I mean, we gotta do it. Where they oh, gotta yeah. go eat? That's the f- oh, sh- my fault. I forgot. I, my fault. I forgot. We supposed to do it in the beginning. Look, man, we got Elijah Hughes coming on in two minutes, so stay tuned. All right, we gonna get on to that conversation. But before we do, we just like to thank our sponsor, man, Glenstone <laughs> Cannabis Company. You see him down at, at, at my screen. It's in the bottom right-hand corner. You see what they got going on in there. They got the lovely uh, logos and everything. But we appreciate y'all, man, being the sponsor for the Devo and Chris Joe Show. If you guys ever feel like you need to go handle your business, I don't know. It's each his own. Right down the block from Galaxy. It's on Walton Street on your right-hand side. If you're coming from the opposite way, it's on your left-hand side. Flintstone Cannabis Company. We appreciate you, baby. We appreciate you, Mike. Maximum blessings. The big love. So here we go. We're going to let you go hear the Elijah Hughes conversation. We're going to make sure that uh, we talk some big Q stuff. And, and uh, again, we are uh, wishing our best to Benny Williams. And I know these guys are going to pull together and figure it out. We out of here, man. Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is the Devo and Chris Joe show. You already know what time it is, man. We got a special guest on today, one of the Syracuse greats. We spent two years away at at East Carolina before transferring in uh, for two years at Syracuse. Actually, you did three years, E, right? Because you sat out one. I did one year at East Carolina, and I did three at Syracuse, yeah. One year at East Carolina, three at Syracuse. So the, the one year that he sat out, I was there on staff. I think I was there two years on staff with you. I was able to, I was busting your ass two years up there. I knew he was going to say something. <laughs> Yo, kind of, um, so, so we'll get into that in a little bit. We'll talk about that. But but just kind of start off, E, and, and kind of just uh, let everyone know what's been going on. I, I know you're with Utah, and then you're with Portland. Uh, and now you with uh, the Milwaukee Bucks G League, Wisconsin Herd. So kind of just update everybody on on your journey, your NBA journey, and and, and what's been going on. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, uh, thank you guys for having me on. Um, this is awesome. I love talking basketball, huge basketball. It's always a pleasure. But uh, yeah, so I'm yes, going. Sir. This is year this is year four for me. Uh, I'm in, with the Wisconsin Herd in the G League. But prior to this, I was drafted in 2020 to New Orleans and traded on draft night to Utah. And so I spent a year and a half there and then got traded to Portland. 
to finish out 2022 there. And then, yeah, no, 2021 there, and then finish uh, the, my third season with the Wisconsin Herd. And then I decided to come back to the Herd because there's another opportunity for me here. Yeah, bro, just kind of, kind of, right? Yeah, yeah, facts. Uh, I was just gonna uh, say that. Like, fuck, Twenty-one, twenty-two, all them years, we blending in like a motherfucker. Yeah, it's crazy. It'd it be going by like this too. It's already twenty-four. <laughs> like it's crazy. <laughs> Bro, backtrack a little bit, man, and, and just I wanted to talk about your, uh, you know, getting drafted and, and that experience that you had in Utah because you, I mean you got some um, pretty good opportunities, and some playing time, and then yeah. going to Portland you know, be able to play alongside guys like, uh, you know, Damian Lillard. And I think you were with CJ McCollum at the time as well. Um, well I don't CJ, know if he was CJ, Yeah, CJ was part of my was trade. He so he got traded. Yeah, he got traded okay. to New Orleans. And then Josh Hart went to Portland with me and Joe. Ingles went to Portland. A lot, a lot of moving parts, man. But just kind of talk yeah. about your uh, – you know, your experience, you know, with Utah and then going to Portland uh, and, and, you know, how that NBA life is. Yeah, I mean, so going to Utah in 2020 was, it was, it was different for me because I, I come, when I come from Syracuse, it was kind of like, especially my last year, it was kind of like, yo, give me the rock, get out the way, and I'm going to make something happen. And I'm going to get the foul line, get, get somebody a shot, Facts. or score, score the basketball. It's just one or the other. Um, so when I got to Utah, it's almost as like I had to take a step back and like almost learn how to play basketball, you know, learn how to be a guy to sprint to the corner, um, space the floor, playoff closeout role. Uh, yeah, be a kind of a, a be a be a role player. So I learned how to be a role player and and figure out who I was in my first year in Utah. And it was difficult. Like it was really difficult. They they would send me to the G League to kind of get reps and play, and um, they would tell me to go down there and go get forty just so I can feel like myself again sometimes. <laughs> but um, it, it was difficult trying to trans- transition into a role and kind of be like a guy that could just fit in on a team rather than be a guy that could run a team. And uh, it was really it was hard. It was it was different. It was stressful. It was frustrating, but you know, looking back on it, I, I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. You know, I was around. I had four All Stars on my team that year. I had Rudy Gobert was Defensive Player of the Year. Jordan Clarkson was Sixth Man of the Year. Joe Ingles was runner up for Sixth Man of the Year. Boyan Bogdanovic was shooting like 50, 40, 90 at that point. I think Royce O'Neal was first team all defense. It was just like we had too yeah. much artillery, too much firepower, and I, I got to sit back and just learn from it. I got to just see kind of my first year how to be a pro. I used to see Mike Conley coming in there early. I used to see uh, Donovan always getting his work in early. Uh, so I just kind of learned how to be a professional and uh, really try to hone in on that kind of skill of just being a pro, showing up to work on time, and then getting what I need to get done done. And um, that was huge for me because I know a lot of rookies who, who, who didn't have it that way got to just throw them right in the fire, um, and you know like that, that that benefits people to play, but it, it doesn't benefit everyone. So I got to just sit back and learn and kind of be a sponge, and that was huge for me. And then getting traded to Portland, I got an opportunity to play play a little bit more. Um, you know, I didn't play how I wanted to play, uh, but I was just happy to you know be playing basketball on an NBA team. And I, I wish I could go back and do it differently. I, I would definitely try to play a little bit better, but it is what it is. Everything happens for a reason. And um, so I finished out my year there. And then going into my first year in the G was just, for me, it was humbling. It was just kind of like a, you know what, just go in there, be where your feet are, go hoop, have fun, try to, you know, rekindle that, rekindle that fire, rekindle that love. Because, you know, not playing almost two years was just kind of like, you know how, yeah, I know how it is. It's depressing, it's draining. It's just like, damn, like, come on. You know what I mean? So, so my first year, in, yeah, my first year in the G was just kind of like, yo, like, it's all right. Like, you got to refine yourself, but refigure it out. And that's what that's what happened. And I had a good season last year. And uh, I didn't, it didn't work out with any call-ups or anything of that nature. But, you know, I got another opportunity, another opportunity to come back here this year in hopes of a call-up. Uh, and I'm just trying to do that. <laughs> Grinding, man. It's, it's, it's a grind. And just yeah. to touch on something that you mentioned, like finding that love for the game again, because when yeah. you've been doing something at a high level for so long and you kind of feel like it's taken away from you because most people would be yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? You should be grateful you're in the league, but they don't understand that you worked so hard your whole life to be there, not to sit there. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it's exactly. Like exactly. People exactly. really don't understand what it is to, to be. Yes, you're grateful. Obviously, you're in the league, the best part of the best players in the world, but you want to contribute because just of who you are and what you come from and people look exactly. at that like that. He, 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 why is he unhappy? But this is people who don't right. understand the game, don't know what, what goes in on a daily basis for you to be where you are. Right. So shout out to you. Though, exactly. I, 
I, I, I've been through, I mean, I was in the, in, in, with, with Boston and having to go up and down and uh, back to, to, who the fuck was it? Uh, Maine. Maine. The Red Claws. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. Maine Red Claws. And it's like, like you said, I'd go down there and all the vets, like, go there and kill. You'll be all right. Doo -doo -doo. But it's such right, a business, right. business side of things that people do not know. You know what I'm saying? And myself included, when you're watching the league from afar, you see guys playing, you see the Christmas games, you see the playoffs, the matchups. When you're in that shit, you're really seeing stuff firsthand and understanding, like, damn. Like, this shit is about wins and losses. This is about contracts. Who's exactly. getting paid more? Who's getting... And now it all starts to make sense why certain guys got to play. Not even because they're better, but they have to because they got to play who they pay, right? So it's a whole bunch of factors that people don't understand that go into why someone might not be playing. And I remember just being a young boy watching someone like, uh, you know, at the end of the bench being like, yo, he must be ass. He's not playing at all. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, mm -hmm. and then, then here I am at the end of the bench clapping like a motherfucker. I'm like, yo, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah. nah, I'm like, I'm not. Right. I'm not. Nice. Like, right. It, it right. You ain't ass nice, neither. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know I mean? Exactly. And it's a, it takes a certain type of strong will and a, and a tough, like, a tough will person, tough minded person to go through that and, and really persevere. So, again, bro, shout out to you for that, for real. Yeah, absolutely. And then another thing on top of that was just like looking back now, uh, just like how I view everything now, how my career is kind of panning out. Like my my rookie year, again, all that firepower I told you we had, like I wasn't ready. Keeping it real, I was not ready for that. And like we, I was a COVID class, so we went March. Our season was done. We was over with right. in Syracuse, and then we went. We went like eight, nine months. We know with pre-draft of, of a pre-draft, and we were really at home doing pre-draft because you couldn't we couldn't fly around and work out for teams, and we didn't have a combine, we didn't have a summer league, so we That's went crazy. Yeah, damn, right, right. We went we went damn we went damn near from the drafts to training camp. We didn't have no OTAs, no type of like real time to come in and get some work in mm -hmm. and figure some things out. So I'm keeping it real, like I wasn't ready. I, I needed that to just see. I needed to just see how this thing works. I was not ready. Right. I, was, I was it was a lot for me and. I'm just I'm, I, I wouldn't want it, of course I would want her to play but like I wouldn't want it any other way I'd rather been able to just learn and sit back and, and have all these vets and good guys around me and teaching me and just seeing you know just seeing how this, this game is played how it's supposed to be played um, and like having that understanding for the game now yeah hey. And you know what, and, and I want to, because we talked about, and me and Joe has talked about this uh, numerous times on the show, just about like reinventing yourself, right? Because it, yeah. because each stage of your life, like it, it's got to be a new you, you know what I'm saying? And like, it, exactly. as far exactly. as from, from a basketball standpoint, all of us, when we were in high school, were the man, you know what I'm saying? We were all Americans. Right. We, we, mm -hmm. The ball was in our hands. Even like when you get to college, same, same type of shit. Like you, you are the exactly. man, the ball is in your hand. And if you're lucky enough you know, you, when you get to the NBA, maybe that will happen. But for most motherfuckers, I'd say, Joe, it, it, tell me if I'm wrong, it, 85, 90% motherfuckers are going to be a role player. You know what I'm saying? And, and regardless if you demand on your team in, in, in college or not, when you get to that league, you got to really reinvent yourself. And, and, Joe, we talked about exactly. the people who are willing willing to do that and willing to, like, mm -hmm. you know, accept a different role. Or, those are the people who are really going to have success. For because sure. I'm, we, for sure. We all Absolutely. know motherfuckers who got to the league. I, I know and this is a quick story. It was back in the day, Corey Hightower, he's from Flint, Michigan. He, mm -hmm. bro, just another motherfucker you hear be like, when, if you go back home, you'd be like, man, that motherfucker should have been way better than motherfuckers in the league. You know what I'm saying? We know right. plenty of motherfuckers like that, but just whatever happened. He was the type of dude went to training camp with, with the Lakers who was on his team, Kobe Bryant. You know what I'm saying? So he the type of motherfucker. I know, I already know Corey C. Hightower. He was a man. Like, he, he, he go in there, man, who the fuck is this motherfucker? I, I'm way better than this motherfucker. Like, he, that's how we talking. He, he going to tell you like that, right. just right to your face. Man, who the fuck is this, man? This motherfucker can't even carry my bag. Like, he, that's that's how we talking. You know what I'm saying? But not knowing, like, motherfucker, this is, you know, one of the greatest yeah. motherfuckers of all time. But, like, he wasn't willing right. to... Like, like switch that shit up. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, right, we want you right, on the team, right. but we want you to play a role. And, and and right the next day when he said that shit, that motherfucker was on a flight back to Flint. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just, <laughs> they, like the yeah. guys who are willing to, you know, sacrifice that and, and, and buy into a role are the guys who are going to, you know, succeed in the league. So I guess my, my question is for you, like, 
how, how is that process for you? You know what I'm saying? How was it for you being able to like know that, all right, you said I do got to step back. I got to reinvent myself. And this is what I need to do now yeah. to be able to make the team. I'm not, I'm not going to be a guy who has the ball in his hands all the time, but I need to space mm-hmm. the floor and run to that corner and be a threat, you know, on the three point line. How, how was that for you? Just, just dealing with that. Uh, I'm, I mean, now year four is like, I know exactly what, who I need to be to play in this league. Um, I know exactly what I need to do. I know exactly how I need to structure my workouts. I know how to, I know exactly what I'm doing in the weight room. So like, I kind of, I kind of like have pinned it down to a science of like how my body is just working, how, what my body's doing on a daily basis. So, you know, my workouts, I'm shooting a lot of threes. I'm, I'm trying to become a threat from a real threat from the three point line. Um, you know, defense, you know, always causing havoc, being a disruption on defense. Uh, you know, you know what it is, playing off, playing off a closeout, uh, playing off quick, quick decisions, point five decisions. So, you know, you know how all that is. So, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to figure out that's who I am. Um, and I'm just kind of incorporating to my everyday routine. And it's, and it's, I'm not going to lie, it's been hard. Like, it's that's definitely been hard, been hard, especially in year one, I remember some of my workouts in year one, I was doing in Utah, and I'm like, yo, bro, I can't do, I can't play like this. Like, I, I cannot, like, it was just, <laughs> that's like, what I'm, I'm saying. Does, that fuck, yeah, it's does that fuck like, you up at first? Does it, does it like, fuck yeah, you up? Because, like, it almost make you feel like, 100%. damn, I'm way fucking better than this. But, you know, for me, <laughs> no, 100%, like, yeah, 100%. It's like, almost like, There'll be times where I'll be in the game and like, yo, I, 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 I got to dribble the ball. Can I dribble the ball? Like, is that okay? Can I dribble the ball? So, <laughs> it'd be, it's wild, bro. It's wild. It's, it's really, it's a hard adjustment, but it's an adjustment that, again, you, a lot of, 80% of the league needs to make when they're, yep. you know, coming into this league to be successful. 100%. 100%. So, I want to take it back now. You know, you got a successful year at, at, at East Carolina, but this is called Q Sports Talk, so we're not going to stay there too, too long <laughs> to make the decision, right? To, to, to trans- <laughs> let's talk about that transition. So again, you have a great year. Um, you you have some instant success over there, which you average thirteen or so. And you make how does that decision to transfer come about? Was that always something where you felt like I could play at a higher uh, at a higher conference in a better conference? And it just so just my circumstances were what they were coming out of high school, and that's what was always mm-hmm. in the back of your mind that you wanted to transfer. And just uh, how did that all come about? Uh, I mean, it's it's a little bit of a mix of everything, you know. It's it's definitely that point you just made. I feel like I can play, you know, at a higher level, at, at, at some more competition. Definitely that. Um, and I didn't have the opportunity in high coming out of high school with those opportunities. It was a mixture of, you know, I just want I also wanted to be closer to home. Um, I'm from New York originally, so I just wanted to kind of make make it easier for my family, my sisters, and my parents to come see me play. Um, you know, we had a lot of our own issues at East Carolina, um, just stuff that was going on with our, just our team, our staff. So I just kind of wanted to just go do something, try something different. Um, so when I made that tr- transition to transfer, um, a lot of people have noticed already, but like I originally I was going to go to Seton Hall. Like I was going there. There was no kind of like not much to talk about to nobody. I didn't want to breathe. I didn't do all the process. Of, uh, Shaheen Holloway. He was assistant. Oh, Shaheen. Okay. He, yeah. Yeah, Ke- yeah. Kevin Willer was the head coach at the time. And it would have been a year. I would have been going in the year Miles Powell was going into his sophomore year, and we would, mm-hmm. I would have registered that year at Seton Hall. So like I was, that was kind of already set, ready to rock and roll. But then Coach Coach Red called me. And I remember I was in my dorm room packing all my stuff in my in my little dorm at ECU, and Coach Red called me, and we had a long, a good conversation, a long conversation. And that's when kind of everything kind of shifted. I was like, "Yo, I gotta, I gotta go to Houston. I gotta go see it. I gotta go." And the reason, I wasn't like, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to do all the go to the schools. Like, I wasn't trying to do all that because, like, I, I knew where I was going, so I didn't want to make it a big kind of. I just wanted to get it over with. But then Coach Red called me, and I was like, "Nah, I gotta go." So then I went to, I actually called Shaheen Holloway, and I said, "Listen, like." I'm sorry, so I'm, I'm gonna go to Cuse. I'm gonna go see it. I'm gonna go see what Bam has to say, and then I'm gonna let you know. And he was mm. upset about that because he was really upset real. about that. But, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all because he knew, the motherfucker. He knew. Oh yeah. shit! It's, 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 <laughs> once you get up there, it's over, yo. Yeah. So that's exactly what happened. I went up there. You know, Coach Behan, he sold me. Uh, Coach Red, they sold me. Everyone, everyone sold me, and I kind of I committed there, and the rest is history. <laughs> So talk, 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 talk about, about that. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Joe. Go ahead, Joe. No, no, I was just going to ask him about that red shirt year. Just talk about being patient and having to wait because you had to sit out. You you didn't have that that COVID yeah. at the time. So you actually had to sit out. Uh, that was a great so red shirt year, dude. 
<laughs> it was. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. For your opportunity. Yeah, I was. I was learning. So you had to learn. Yeah. I was I was seventeen or I was probably seventeen or maybe eighteen years old. So I was a kid, bro. I was a child. I remember just being like so upset some days that like, I would look up at the score of our game and then we see we lost by like six points. And I'm like, yo, I can go score ten points for us to win the game. Like I can go do that. So it was very like frustrating. I, and I felt horrible because like my guys would be out there battling all day and all, yeah. killing each other in practice. And I'm like, damn, I wish I was out there. So it really like for me, it was horrible to begin with. And then um, it, was, it had my spirit down a little bit. You know, I remember GMAC uh, workouts. It was like I, I wasn't bringing energy. I wasn't being, being the same, you know, Eli with a smile on his face every day because I was just like I was sad. I wasn't playing. I didn't want to come work out each and every day and then yes. not have something to work, I'm working towards. Like I was there in the summertime. Sure. Like, so I'm, I'm in there in the summertime. Like what am I here for? What am I working out for? I'm not playing all season. <laughs> so it was, it was kind of like it was very, very, very frustrating. But when I, when I got there, um, when I actually, when we finally got to school and the season started, I kind of, I would say right before Christmas is when like, I kind of flipped the switch in my head mentally, like, you know what, let me just come in here and focus on getting better every day. Um, and just get ready for next year. Um, that's all I could do. That's all I could possibly do. So I might as well just take advantage of it. And then that's when it got, that's when it started getting, like, we started playing the one-on-ones, the three-on-threes, the, the five-on-fives and like, Devo, GMAC and some managers and some other the walk-ons and guys and, that shit got competitive, bro. It got really, really intense. And it was fun, though. It was like, man, it was why, almost like, were, that shit was Me and GMAC was always on the same team. Me and GMAC was always on the same team. Always, always. <laughs> it, it, was, it was really, and I appreciated that. You know, I really did, because, like, they was, of course, they wanted to hoop, but it was also for me, like, I'm out there, I'm guarding E, I'm guarding GMAC, like, that's 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 a workout in its own. So I'm I'm yeah, yeah. that tired, too tired to even think about playing in the game. <laughs> so like we would we would play on game days and like I will that's get it. a good workout in enough. So like I'm I'm not I'm good. I don't, I don't need to play. Like, I'm tired as hell. Y'all got it. So um, I appreciated it, but it was really competitive. It was super competitive, and we we would play for like you know, two hours sometimes. Like, we play for a little while sometimes. Hey Joe, yeah, you know how no. hey, Joe, this ain't no that pickup turned into some real shit. You, you already know, nah, like, yeah, especially because yeah, like, right. me and G Mac are competitive. So like, you, you already know yeah. what time it is. If, if this motherfucker <laughs> missing a pass, hey, what's up, motherfucker? You ain't getting the ball the rest of the game. You know what I'm saying? Like we, like we, we right, really talking shit. Talking shit, talk shit, talk shit to E. I'm, you know me. I'm, uh -huh. I'm going at E. Like we, yo, like that's we were really, you know, when we out. It was real. Bro, it was real bunk. It was real, but yeah, I remember I, I was walking. I, I used to walk to the carry room with my headphones on, playing my music. Like it's on, like it's on. <laughs> Eric, <laughs> Eric, Eric, they they won last last week. Now nah, it's, it's on this week. It's on this week. <laughs> That's what's up, Dad. Hey. Yo, bro, how, how do you think that that red shirt year really helped you going into the you, you know your second or your I guess, yeah your second year at Cuse and then yeah. eventually your your last year where you averaged almost twenty points and then first team All ACC? How, how did that red shirt year you know help you for those two years? Man, like I said, I was I was pissed I wasn't playing, but like looking back, I wouldn't want it any other way, bro. Because like the amount of confidence I went into my first year playing with, I was like, yo, I was just shooting, I was just shooting for a year straight working out. Like I'm ready to play ball, <laughs> so like I'm yeah. confident at the, at the utmost highest level. Ties in the backcourt, Frank in the backcourt, O'Shea down there, big big P down there. So like I'm like, yo, I got we got confidence. I remember I, I went walked into the year like. Yo, we gonna be nice. Like we nice. We got a real good yeah, team. Nice um, yeah, we got we got a good team. We got guys who could play. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling ready to go. Rock and roll. And I had a, I had a good season. I had a really, really good season. You know, Tyus was kind of the head of the snake of that that team. Um, and he we kind of went as he went. But you know, it was unbelievable to play alongside with Tyus or Shea, Frank. You know, those guys were. It was a special group, and it was something that I don't take for granted at all because we were a really good team. We didn't get to do what we wanted to do in March. We lost to Baylor in the first round, but you know, even that game I had against Baylor, that was kind of like the, like, all right, like next year it's on. Like, next year I'm going to have the ball. Exactly. Next year this is my team. And I just went into the next season with even up more, up more most confidence. And, um, you know, going into my last year, the summer going into my last year was when I was there all summer with GMAC. I was waking up at 6 a.m. every day. Um, I went home like twice that summer. Like I was like locked in. Like I'm trying to Mission. be that guy this year. Mission. Mission. I want the ball. Yeah, I want the ball under two minutes every game. Like it's my year. This is this is my team. 
and me and G-Mac got after it every day that summer, and then, you know, the year, you know, speaks for itself, I guess. Facts. Yeah, first team all first team all ACC. I mean, you. I mean, that was a hell of a year. And then obviously, mm-hmm. to be able to get drafted. And, uh, I mean, it shows yeah. all the hard work you put in for those three years. So, bro, have you been uh, keeping up with uh, with the Q's team this year? I just want to know, kind of know your yeah, thoughts. I and do. obviously, I do with the change with Red with uh, Red being the head coach. You know, what do you think uh, about this year so far? Oh man, I did. I'm really first of all. I'm really happy to coach Red. Um, I know it's been a long time coming for him, and I'm really, really excited for him. Just to see him out there coaching, stand, standing up on the sideline. That's something that, like, again, I know he doesn't take for granted, and I'm just really happy for him. Uh, being that he recruited me mostly, he did my recruiting. He came to my house. He, you know, he was that guy for me. And uh, you know, just keeping up with the young guy. I remember I gave. <laughs> I don't know if I should say this story, but uh, just oh, seeing the young guys, I gave, <laughs> I gave Benny his first sip of alcohol. Like, I gave Benny his first sip. So seeing him now like, <laughs> playing, playing and actually, like, you know, getting good minutes and helping the team out with uh, some good some good reps. It's been great. It's still, like, kind of like, oh, yeah, exactly. Accepting his role. Accept, right accepting his role. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. And then, you know, JJ coming into his own, Judah being Judah, um, you know, Chris is – Chris is, looks like sometimes NBA wing when he when he feels like it. Um, I'm telling you, yeah, you know, th- yeah, he he got like that size. He could shoot it. He that that athleticism and the and the transition. So he he's gonna be a really good player. Um, Malik Brown, I'm a big fan of Malik Brown. He's the kind of do it all four man. Reminds me of a wreck a little bit, but I, I'm really excited for this team. They're still a little young, but um, still some hiccups here and there. But it's 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 shaping out to be a really good team. So I got a, really a, good, a really good, a really good core, a really good core, <laughs> for sure. Definitely a good core. We got Quadir coming off yeah. the bench, doing well. Um, exactly. But, yeah, Quadir. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people, when we we do our shows, they they ask us, do we think Judah should leave and enter the draft? And we know that he tested the waters before this year. You being mm-hmm. in it right now, you know what I'm saying? Seeing the landscape of the league or even the G League right now. Mm-hmm. What would you say to a guy like Drew in his situation right now, or what kind of advice would you give him just um, going through it and having been through it yourself on leaving or coming back to school? Um, that's a, that's a good good question, man. I think that's from from watching. I think you know he's a guy that he can get in the paint whenever he wants. So with that. You can get there, and he he has to be a little bit smarter making decisions. You know, I know he shoots a lot of free throws. He gets to the he knows how to get the free throw line, but you know, when you get up top, and if you get to the the next level, it's like you got to be able to make that decision much faster. And you might not always get those calls, and a lot of the calls he gets, you're not going to always get those calls. You're not going to always get those that people jumping on as many bite fakes as you do, uh, pump fakes as you do in college. So you're not going to always get those calls. So I just think his decision making sometimes is. Um, Something that you know, and he's probably aware of it too. Um, I'm not gonna sit, sure. here, sit up here and criticize the kids because he's a, he's a child. He's still trying to figure it out, like we all are. But I think I, I think he's definitely an NBA player. I don't know when. I don't know when. It, I'm not gonna sit here and say when the right time is for him. But I think yeah. just like just like any other kid entering the draft or thinking about entering the draft, we, we all got something to work on. Definitely. Yeah. No doubt. That was a good answer. You could be a motherfucking coach. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you can be a coach. I, I like, but I, I mean, it, 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 he's obviously he's, he's a great player, bro. But for the next level, right. as you know, as Joe knows, it's it's a whole nother whole nother thing. And, and yeah, I think the number one thing too, you got to be able to shoot that motherfucker. I was and I was gonna get to that. I didn't want to sit up here and just go go off of what what he should do. But we, I think we, we, we done said really, it times already. So whatever you see, yeah, probably we done. I mean, probably touch on. But shooting the ball is he important. Definitely, he, 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 he definitely got to be able to make, especially the, the wide open ones, uh, you know, the swing swings. Um, he's going to get a lot of catch and shoots from top. You know, when he gets to the next level, he's going to get a lot of catch and shoots and uh, being comfortable shooting catch and shoots um, and then knocking them down so he could then be driven and get to the paint whenever he wants. Yeah, I agree. That, that's a fact. That's a fact. Hey, uh, E, we, we ain't going to keep you on too much longer, but I, before we get you off, Give me your uh, one memory because you've been, you know, you've been a lot of places, you you know, these last four years, you, you travel around a lot. But give me that one memory that stick in the back of your head from Q's, man, that you'll, that you'll never forget. It could be on the floor, off the floor, whatever it is, man, a, a, a interaction you had with somebody, 
just let us know what I works for coach. I want to know a funny ass yeah, coach yeah. story too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. No. Funny coach story. <laughs> coach, man, Coach Beheim, he has said some things, man. Is and it's um, it, he's one time. I remember one time in the locker room, he told Barama that he should go flush himself down the toilet. He said that, and that was like. <laughs> He was just like, why would you think about that? Why would you even think about that? <laughs> and I remember the whole locker room was just kind of like trying to keep it together, like almost laughing and stuff. Yeah, sure. but, uh, Coach Bam, he's, he's funny, man. He used to have a lot of one-liners that were funny. I remember one game, I got hurt. And I, I was, uh, I got hurt like pregame, like during warm-ups, actually. I, I don't know who was playing. But I, I got hurt during warm-ups, and I tried to play, and I couldn't, I couldn't go. Like, my, it was my abduct, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't go. So I sat on the bench the rest of the game, and I sat right next to Coach Beheim. I was in the middle of Coach Beheim and Coach Red, and I remember oh, Quincy went up for a light. Quincy, Quincy went up for like a reverse layup, and he missed it like over the, the, the over the backboard or something like that. And I remember I heard Coach, I heard Coach sitting there. Now he's just there, like and watches. Yeah, and he he said. That little chicken shit coward. And I remember I, he said that. And then I, heard, I heard Coach Red. Coach Red was like, like almost losing it. And I was, I was sitting there with a towel on my face, like trying not to laugh. Oh man, Coach Bayhawk, he used to say the funny and stuff. Yeah, yeah, he done um, called me chicken shit before too. So that's that's yeah, that, that's, that's, that's that's his go to. That's his go to. But uh, I would say honestly, Tyus's game game winner against Georgetown, that was like a. That was one of the loudest environments I've ever been a part of, I've ever seen, I've ever felt. You know, I get goosebumps about thinking about that game because I remember that game winner was just, it was crazy in there. The dome was crazy. It was tough. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. What was it? That was that pull up right, right about it. The elbow already hit that. Yeah, it was like an in and out joint. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was, a, it was, it's funny because coach in a timeout, he knew that they were going to send two at ties. Like, so he was like, Yo, Eli, because if you watch the video, I flashed up to get the ball. And then I flashed up to get the ball, and then Tyus just comes sprinting towards me. But it was supposed to be for me to make a play. I was supposed to go down there and make a play. <laughs> but Tyus was like, nah, nah, nah. And Tyus just ran towards me and, and like, was like, give me the ball. And I, I had to pass him the ball, and then he went and made a play. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it originally, that, out, yeah. originally that wasn't that w- it wasn't for Tyus that play. A lot of people don't know that it was not for Tyus to get the ball. <laughs> we we it gonna have Tyus on and we go we gonna talk to Tyus <laughs> about that. Ask him why why the fuck he ain't let you get yeah. that shot after that. But it, it, hey, I'm living with it. I'm living with it. He's been in a, he's been in those situations a lot, and uh, he was he was amazing in under two minute situations. Man, you give him the ball and just let him go. Special. Yeah, one of the one of the best clutch, clutch players to come through, Q's, so no doubt. Yo, Absolutely. E, man, we we appre- we appreciate you hopping on, man. Um, I, I want to wish you luck going forward uh, with, with Wisconsin. You, uh, I know how tough it is to get that call up, but you know we we uh yeah. we hoping the best for you. And, and regardless, just keep killing, keep fellas. doing your thing, and, and you always welcome back on the show, man. It's always love. It's always for you, dog. Appreciate it, fellas. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, E. 